right, today we're going to talk about the Amazon ghost story and we're going to talk about why there's only so much time to fight racism and how the two connect, what they have to do with each other and stay tuned for that later in the video. Make sure you watch the video in its entirety to get that very important information. Now first, the Amazon ghost store opened about a week and a half ago and people are already talking about, you know, how they're going to test the security system. It's a cashier list store. And people are, you know, there's this big thing of the AI taking over. There's the kiosk at McDonald's. People were in fear of that that was going to lose, you know, take the cashier's jobs and cut employment. Now, the cashier sector represents roughly a few million, let's say 3.4 million cashiers in the U.S. And about... 2.3 million of those 3.4 million would be in danger of losing their jobs and that only represents I think 0.6 of the market as far as the overall labor force but that is a lot of people a lot of people would be out of work now Jeff Bezos the, the owner of Amazon he was just announced as the richest man in the world and ironically the Amazon Go store does not allow food stamps. And there's a petition by an Ohio uh, policy group. They're trying to get signatures basically to push Amazon to allow its workers even. You know, the few people that do work at these Amazon stores or distributions or whatever, a lot of them cannot afford to even shop there. And we see this is a common thing in capitalistic society where you have people that work at these rich uh, retail clothing stores where the price tag is astronomical and you know they need some kind of rich husband or the man if he works there he needs some kind of rich wife so those that don't get offended and you know they have to get these needs covered by basically um, being wealthy by making six figures so it's really in saying that you have to work, that you can work these jobs and you cannot afford to shop where you work, where you help build up the company, where you help the richest man in the world become richer, yet you can't even, you know, afford some of these prices and these foods. So I want you to think about that. Now also, the 2.3 million jobs that are in jeopardy and this study is basically saying that the people who are cashiers at different places, private sector places, Walmart, Costco's, etc., etc., and that represents three point represents nearly 37 billion potential loss of income. So the 2.3 million cashiers, if they lost their jobs, that's 37 billion dollars gone, gone out of nowhere. So. The potential effect in this, like if you were to look at some areas, now mostly um, they have a, a graph and it's basically the eastern, like the middle right part of the United States, like the western, northwest, and the, a lot of the Midwest will not be affected, but the east, the Atlantic region, some of the Midwest and the south, you know, going about to Texas, that's going to be affected. So, um, again, doesn't accept food stamps. Um, they just took over a large portion of Whole Foods. You see a lot of their um, logos and different things on different produce in the produce section at Whole Foods. We know Whole Foods accept food stamps. So, we're beginning to see this monopoly of you know, Amazon, not beginning, but it's been happening, it's in motion, and, you know, what is the point, what is the goal, and it's like, you know, these capitalists, they want to take over the world, take over corporations, take over things that affect our daily lives, our access to food, different things like that, but they donate a few million dollars to charity here and there. And if you remember, if you're young watching this, you may have grown up with um, self-check lines, self-check uh, checkout lines. That may be all you know, but maybe if you're around 28, 25 and older, you can remember where there were none. 
and these didn't exist. And it's like, that was really the start of this cashier list, the kiosk that we see at McDonald's and other stores, because people cannot get along. And that's, we're gonna get into the second part of this video. The inability to resolve conflict, the inability to um, just, the ability to dis, inability to agree to disagree is being kind of made worse through social media because everybody has an opinion but everybody wants their voice to be heard so here you have a group of people and citizens who have feeling who are feeling oppressed whose voices and oppression comes in different avenues different areas different ways but people feel they want to have their voices heard People don't want to come to conclusions. And the divide with Donald Trump being put in place, even if it was Hillary Clinton, they profit off of racism. And they profit off of racism by keeping us divided. And they're going to continue to profit because if we can't do, if we can't get it together, essentially, the robots that are artificial intelligence they're going to do whatever we can't do. And that will be basically the end of it because the robots are not going to be racist. The robots are not going to discriminate. The robots are not going to have a heart. The robots are not going to be passive aggressive with their racism. They're not going to be covert or overt. They're not going to really have no past history of, well, he was, I didn't like his family or... I don't like, you know, this or that or his family. or They're not going to stereotype humans. They're not going to stereotype you by your race. Different things like that. They're not going to have these uh, misconceptions and stereotypes. And that eliminates work-related issues. That eliminates the political correctness that, you know, wears people out. There's going to be statistics saying that, you know, robots can eliminate, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, um, stress, work-related stress from humans. Robots can make it a more comfortable environment. You don't have to worry about sick days. You don't have to worry about um, someone going postal or, you know, you got to be escorted out or different things like that. So if you logically look at it, this is the direction we're heading in. We've I've been doing videos on the sex robots. Now the sex robots, you have women dropping their husbands off at sex brothels where sex robots are only available. Now, this is becoming more and more accepted in society. Because first was, okay, 1984 and George Orwell, Big Brother, and the robots are going to be taking over. There's going to be a Terminator, a War of the Machines, all of this stuff. But that could still be coming, but they're already in our bedroom. So we're already being subconsciously programmed to accept, well, and that, what better way to be programmed than basically we're going to accept that, look at them as human, they're, to replace them on a human level, to replace them on an intimate level, to replace us, I say, as humans on an intimate, more humane, compassionate, because we're putting the robots in a position to fulfill our loneliness, to fulfill our desires, to fulfill um, things we can't do or say to other humans due to our fear, our egos, or whatever the case may be. So this is already set up and designed to invade the subconscious, to invade the home. And if we do not recognize this, Basically, this is the art of war where it's fighting without fighting because because it's already some attachment there. There's already some intimacy developed. People will be less likely to resist fighting or denying it. And we have a terrible habit of assuming that if it doesn't bother me or I don't care what goes on in their bedroom, I keep thinking that and let's see where it gets us because 
I mean, there is you you have to look at society from a certain time point and look at you know there's basically a downward spiral or if you want to say morally if you want to say religious wise activism music you have to acknowledge that there is a downward decline in these things even if it's just one of them you have to acknowledge that and you have to understand why is that what is the purpose of that what is the agenda and that's for another video, but I just want to briefly touch on, I've been touching on this all week, and I'll be touching on it a lot more often, is that, you know, the Donald Trump effect is, he gets all the attention. Like, and I didn't see the State of the Union, but I heard he spoke about um, Colin Kaepernick. And Colin Kaepernick... Um, at, I mean, at the State of the Union, he's talking about a football player. And it's like, he's just fueling the racism. Of course, racism exists and we have to fight racism. But we have to understand they're thinking 30 years ahead. And 30 years ahead is, if you say police are killing and police are racist, then we're going to have robocops. And the robocops, they're robots, they can't be racist. They're going to do what we tell them to do or we're going to design them where, you know, they eliminate a threat or something. They're, you know, they're going to make it scientific and seem less threatening to people of color and minorities. So, we have to, if you don't want to, I don't want to say collaborate, if you don't want to, um try and find a quote-unquote good officer or two or uh, have community meetings or like in Cleveland here there's the consent decree try and change the rules and regulations of the police force or something these are things that can happen because if we're in a vulnerable state that's why we're protesting that's why we're doing the activism that's why people are you know having these YouTube channels and speaking out and all of this information and when you're in a vulnerable position you're open to a lot of things like um, the young lady was saying at the uh, abortion anti-abortion press conference that we held there were 16 billboards promoting abortion in the Cleveland area which is nothing but black communities they were in pre predominantly black communities and you know that is promoting basically genocide it's not promoting uh, the imagery of healthy families or, you know, healthy male role models for a lot of the youth out here is promoting the death of black babies. So these are things, little subtle attacks, stuff that we have to get out of this mindset. And that's why this channel is made, kind of constructed the way it is. We have to get out of this mindset that something has to be trendy or it has to be reported by a quote-unquote validated source before we really listen to the information. But we have a habit of, I guess, you know, getting in love with the messenger and the charisma and the, the going this and that and making it entertaining and, uh, you know, which is fine, but listen to the message. This is, this really should not be entertainment. This should be, um, you know, life-changing information that affects you and your family and people that you care about. Entertainment, if you want to be entertained, watch basketball, listen to music. But do you think people were listening to Malcolm X to be entertained or Martin Luther King even to be entertained or Marcus Garvey? Do you think they want to be entertained or were they like, you know, we really got to get out this situation. We got to do whatever it takes. So we have to take the celebrity worship out the savior complex or the God complex, whatever, you know, not the complex that you have, but the, the complex that you see others through your perspective and putting those on a higher pedestal and not really listening to the information that they're, you know, spilling out. So, it's first video, different format. Um, let me know what you think. Is this a, really a non-issue? Is there 
If you feel like there's other issues that take should take a priority over this, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, keep watching.